I want to say something about the photoelectric effect. Uh, let's just go back over the uh, basic ideas and theory about the photoelectric effect. Uh, we have a metal a surface uh, with a vacuum, and uh, we shine some light, uh, some photons arrive at the metal surface, and they cause electrons to be emitted, um, like this. And we catch the electrons uh, on some sort of electrode here, and we can measure the current with a very sensitive meter um, and, uh, and see how many electrons are arriving um, that have been emitted from the metal surface. Um, we can uh, put some sort of power supply there to attract the emitted electrons and measure the current and the other end of the power supply connected onto the metal. Um, The key to what's going on in the photoelectric effect is that we uh, eventually deduce from the experimental evidence, and this was the work that Einstein did, that the energy uh, of the photon is given by a constant, Planck's constant, times the frequency of the photon, and we get the frequency of the photon by uh, measuring the wavelength of the light, which we can do by spectroscopic means and all that sort of thing. And as long as this energy is sufficient, uh, electrons will be emitted and the minimum amount of energy is given by that the energy HF is uh, equal to something called the work function phi which is just enough to get the electrons to leave the surface and if we uh, increase the energy of the photons uh, we get uh, an increase in the kinetic energy of the electrons and there are tricks for measuring the uh, kinetic energy of the electrons, that the kinetic energy of the electrons is given by the total energy delivered here um, by the photons arriving, HF, minus the work function. The work function is the amount of energy required to get the electron out of the surface, to liberate it from uh, its orbit around uh, this, this atom buried in the surface here. So that uh, as we increase the frequency, we find that the electrons have more kinetic energy. And there's a rather neat trick for finding that out. We reverse this voltage here, so that we put a negative voltage on there. And uh, this uh, uh, tends to prevent the electrons from arriving at this collector. And we measure the voltage at which the electrons stop arriving and that tells us that the electrons which were leaving the, the, the metal surface and heading towards this collector they were heading towards the collector and they don't quite make it because they haven't got enough kinetic energy to beat this voltage here and that allows us to measure the kinetic energy of the electrons directly um, uh, in terms of electron volts by measuring this voltage we don't have, uh, in this school, um, photoelectric apparatus. Um, I hope to get it perhaps over the summer. Um, I've uh, put on the board here a graph uh, which is uh, supplied by one of the commercial manufacturers of photoelectric uh, apparatus, uh, which is uh, given to schools. Uh, here you can see uh, the sort of thing that's going on. We have the all-important stopping potentials. Uh, which indicates the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons um, and uh, with red light of 632 nanometers the stopping potential is this lowish value here a bit less than half a volt uh, as we shorten the wavelength and increase the energy of the, photo, uh, of the photons um, the stopping potential increases and then we get to blue light uh, 435 nanometers uh, higher frequency uh, higher energy of the photons and the electrons uh, leave the metal with a higher amount of energy and as we uh, decrease the stopping potential obviously enough the currents increase um, what I've done is looked at what happens to the current um, when there is zero stopping potential uh, for the red for the green and for the blue light and I've plotted uh, those three data points over here. For the red light, at this longer wavelength, uh, we have a smaller current. Uh, for the green light, a bigger current. And for the blue light, a larger current.
Um, and uh, that's expressed in terms of wavelength. Uh, obviously, in this direction, with a longer wavelength, the energy per photon is less. Uh, I've converted these numbers into frequency of the photons, so that now um, uh, we have a frequency, uh, light has this rather high frequency of something times 10 to the 14 hertz. Again, looking at the photocurrent as a function of the frequency, I'm not quite sure whether it's a straight line, I've only got three data points to play with. On the other hand, we find that for red light, um, lower energy, we have this lower current, for green light, uh, a larger current, and for blue light, a yet larger current. Now, we don't know from these graphs what the actual intensity of the light was, um, but there seems to be a fairly clear pattern that uh, when we have higher energy light, not only do we get uh, a greater kinetic energy, a greater stopping potential, but also we seem to get a larger current. What's going on? Um, the uh, expectation, I think, of the uh, question uh, that I have in mind on this um, uh, is that as long as the frequency is beyond the threshold frequency, uh, we get plenty of electrons, and that as the frequency increases, provided the light intensity stays the same, we get a smaller number of photons, and the number of electrons is reduced. Uh, that's a, in my view, simplistic uh, theoretical approach. In practice, what we get is that provided the frequency is greater than the threshold frequency, as we increase the th frequency, we get uh, more and more electrons. I've got the feeling, although uh, it's only a feeling, that um, uh, if we carry on increasing the frequency, that uh, the predicted effect does happen. If we take this up to gamma rays, uh, uh, we're going to find that for a certain intensity, the number of individual gamma rays is going to be very small, and the number of electrons ejected is going to start reducing. But certainly for uh, this area here, in what's going to be the visible light, uh, the experimental evidence suggests pretty strongly that as we increase the frequency, uh, that the number of electrons ejected uh, is in fact greatly increased. The simple theory is that uh, if uh, photons arrive at the metal surface here, electrons will be emitted and that the kinetic energy of the electrons will be given by the photon energy minus the work function. But it's going to be a very lucky photon that interacts with an atom on the exact surface of the metal. First thing we have to remember is that the wavelength of the photons is in the region of 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7 meters. And the diameter of atoms here is in the region of 10 to the minus 10 meters. So uh, it seems very likely that uh, a, a photon arriving here is going to interact with an atom that may be in fact several hundred atoms deep down inside the metal, maybe several thousand atoms, this ratio in the region of 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, between the two scales. It might be true that this applies, that the kinetic energy is equal to the photon energy minus the work function, for an electron emitted from the surface, but an electron emitted further down has to fight its way out through these atoms before it can leave the surface. And that means that for one accidental reason or another to do with the way that these electrons behave, that the kinetic energy of real electrons is going to be given by the uh, photon energy minus the work function minus some random factor r which might be zero if we're very, very lucky, but which is more often going to be some non-zero value. And that this value R means that, in fact, the kinetic energy of the electrons is going to vary in some random way from this maximum to some lesser value. And, in fact, uh, if the uh, amount of energy involved uh, lost on the way out towards the surface, or whatever it is, is great enough, we might find that we don't get any electrons at all. Now what this means when we look at the uh, uh, emission of electrons from a photon 
is that if we look at the energy of the photon, HF, and see how that affects the probability of an electron leaving the surface, we find that we get a function that looks something like this. Here is the probability of emission of an electron. Uh, when the energy is quite close to the work function, it, need, it takes a very lucky electron indeed to actually be emitted from the surface. As the energy increases, photons arriving at the metal are more likely to be able to cause an electron to leave the surface. There are quite a lot of other things worth thinking about as well. There's nothing to say that a photon here will cause the electron to be emitted downwards. It might actually get sent deeper into the metal, never to be seen again. Uh, electrons can be emitted at all sorts of different angles here. But we have this increasing function of energy of the probability of an emission from a photon. And if we combine that with the simplistic approach, we get what I think is suggested by the experimental data, which is that, yes, we have a threshold frequency beyond which uh, we get a current, less than which there is zero current, and then we have to take this probability um, of emission of an electron uh, and that's going to result in some lucky electrons leaving at frequencies just above F0 and the probability is going to increase until we reach a point where we have a very high likelihood that any individual photon will cause an electron to be emitted. Then we're going to get a maximum number of electrons and then, based on the premise of the examiners in a certain question uh, that says what happens when the intensity of the light stays the same, then we're going to find that as the frequency carries on increasing, that we get less photons of greater individual energy and the current might then start falling off. But what we see in real photoelectric equipment, as far as I can tell, not that we've got any here, is this. Not that. And uh, I'd like to hear from anybody who does the experiment.